Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. We are in Las Vegas at the International Swim League World Final. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and I'm joined by Charlie Brown, our community champion. Hey. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here at ISL World Championships. How you feeling? Uh, I'm super excited. Tons of fast swimmers and the hype is real here. For, for, definitely. And so we get a lot of questions about what is the ISL? You know, who are the swimmers competing? Why are they doing it? How does it work? So in this video, we're going to walk through some of the frequently asked questions. What is the ISL? And we couldn't be in a more perfect location in Las Vegas. The uh, session one is about to happen in like two hours. So we actually still don't know who will win season one team title. But um, yeah, so what are some of the questions that we get asked all the time? Uh, I mean, let's start off straightforward. I mean, what is the ISL? Good, so ISL, what is the ISL? That's the first question. Um, so ISL is short for International Swim League, and this is an independent organization, meaning it's like a private company, it's not affiliated with any of the national governing bodies like USA Swimming or FINA or the International Olympic Committee. It runs on its own, and their goal is to grow the sport of swimming through these different event series compet style competitions, right? So there's different events that happen in the fall, and there's, there's teams, athletes are on teams, and the athletes compete in a dual meet style format against each other for points. Uh, so just like any other you know, tournament style sporting event, you're trying to get the most points for your team. In this series, it's unique because the times actually don't really matter. It's all about the way you place for your team. You score the most points possible, and at the end of the competition, one of the teams is gonna have the most points, and that team wins. So it's a team competition, there's prize money involved, and then over the course of the season, there are these dual meets, and then at the end of the season, there's a world final competition where the top teams come here to Las Vegas to compete for the ultimate season title. So very similar to how you have in hockey in America, you have the National Hockey League, you have the NBA, National Basketball Association. So this is on an international level, it's a new format. In 2019 was the first time that this event actually, this series actually came to fruition. It's been a couple of years in the making, but it's really exciting to see it here in Las Vegas. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so going off with these teams, uh, you know, I've heard there's some money involved and possible prizes. Uh, can you go more into what, what Yeah, so there's, there's money involved. And I think, let's back up, uh, let's talk about the team. So in the first season, there were actually eight teams. So I believe 16 guys and 16 girls on every single team. And these swimmers per team are from all over the world. So, you know, like take for example, the, the London Roar. So the London Roar, it has London in the name, but not everyone's from the UK. So they have athletes from all over the world competing on the team. Similarly, the, uh, the Cali Condors, another team competing here in the final. So there's athletes from the United States, you know, California, you know, some of the athletes, but there's a lot of athletes across the US and from Europe and different parts of the world. Um, a unique team is the Energy Standard. Yeah. For example, Energy Standard has you know a training group in Turkey, but there's swimmers like Sarah Soistrom from Sweden. You have Chad Leclo from South Africa. So there's eight teams during the regular season: four in the United States, four in Europe, and then the top four will compete here in Las Vegas. I mentioned a few of them. So the four that are competing here in the final, um, and that was determined by how they placed by points in the regular season. So that's how the top four made it here. So we have Kelly Condors, LA Current, London Roar, and Energy Standard, the top four teams. And there are there is prize money involved. So a lot of the athletes are getting appearance money not only to compete in these competitions for their team as professional athletes, but then there's also prize money for winning events. So if you win an event, you're gonna get cash prize. If you break a world record, you're gonna get cash prize. If you win the team title, you're gonna get a cash prize. And then there's an MVP. And so here at the final, the MVP, most valuable player, will get a $50,000 bonus uh, to the winning. So that if, you know, if you win as a team, every athlete will get $10,000 on the winning team. And that's guys and girls. And then for both guys and girls, there's an MVP award. And so 50,000 for the top guy, 50,000 for the top girl. And that's determined by the number of points scored in this two-day competition. Yeah, that's awesome. But really great for the athletes in general. Now there's something cool about the ISL, which is the skins races, which you don't oh, really yeah. have in every other meet for swimming. What exactly are these skins and how do they affect the meet? Yeah, so skins, that's a really good question. So the skins races is something that's not been done on this level before. Basically, you have eight athletes competing in the 50-meter freestyle, okay? 
after the top eight racers, they compete two athletes per team of the four teams. The top four will race again three minutes later for a chance to make the final round, the third of round of three, to race again three minutes later for the ultimate title of Skins Champion. So you basically, if you're making it to the top two, it's you know elimination tournament style format. So you go from eight to four to two. And if you make it to that last two, that'll be your third 50 in six minutes, basically. So the first 50 goes off. And then three minutes later, we're starting the second 50 with the top four swimmers. Four of them were eliminated and you got the top four. And then three, three minutes after that, you have the top two athletes. And these top two athletes could be from the same team. It's unlikely that hasn't happened yet. It's unlikely that'll happen here actually, because normally you'll stack, the teams will stack up, you know, their top athlete and maybe their second best athlete. But there's so much, so many amazing superstars in this league that it's really, really tough competition. And it's exhausting for the athlete, because if you think about it, like you're going a max effort. It's like a lactate set, but harder because you're competing with the best in the world. There's no room for error. So you go all out, and then three minutes later, you go all out again. And then three minutes later, you go all out for the third time, if you can make it. Um, and there's different strategies associated with that. But the reason why the skins race is so significant, not because of the pain involved for the athletes and the entertainment level for the, you know, there's, we can talk about the entertainment level here, but also because the points are worth three times as much. So if you make it all the way through all three rounds, you're gonna get a significant amount of points. And we've seen in the dual meet season, I call it dual meet season, but we've seen in the, in the regular season, the, the, the score and end result can actually change based on who is winning the skins race and who moves up to the second round and to the third round because everyone's scoring points. Um, another thing that's interesting about this league is there's actually a minimum time standard per event. So if you don't achieve that minimum, minimum time standard, you actually get negative points. So you actually lose points for your team if you swim slow, which is like crazy. Yeah. I've never, I've never oh, seen yeah. anything like this. Like in a dual meet, if you swim slow, you just, you know, we get, you get the clap finish. But now you actually get negative points, which is, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, the, the need for speed is definitely real here. Now let's go back to entertainment. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's big, especially the final here. I mean, I heard there's a DJ, there's light shows. Uh, I mean, yeah, how yeah. do you think, I mean, what is all that about? Yeah, the, what's, what's really special about this specific event, and I've, I've, I've been to, you know, short course world championships, and, which is a similar 25 meter format. So at any world-class swimming event, you're gonna have a, some kind of a light show, there's gonna be music, but ISL kind of like takes it to the next level. So you've got, you actually do have a DJ, you know, on the pool deck, like jamming, yeah, right? He's, definitely he's, he's going, and then you have, there is entertainment in like the, the commercial breaks. That's another thing, this is a made for TV event. So a, typically a swim meet can kind of drag on, it can get stale. Nathan Adrian said yesterday in the press event, you know, this, this can kind of get stale. Like it's the same thing, meets the same announcer, same format over and over. This is a made for TV event. It's two hours, two sessions, a lot of relays, a lot of 50s of stroke, which you don't have at like the Olympic games, for example. So there's a lot of stuff happening back to back to back. And for the spectator, you know, this is really designed with them in mind because a normal swim meet is, is probably designed more for the swimmer. And this event kind of flips it on its head, the whole model where it's like, we want the athletes to have a great experience and to swim fast and work hard, but we're actually focused on the spectators because we want them to have a great spectator experience. And we want that team element. We want the spectators to get behind teams. We want to build that team camaraderie. So there's a light show, it's epic. There's like lights underwater, you know, moving. Yeah, that was this cool. pool was built in 19 hours, a Martha pool. So the venue, there was no pool, they hold concerts and stuff here. But this venue, they built it in 19 hours and it actually, it's the biggest in the world. It has a 21 meter acrylic uh, acrylic wall and it's, it's basically like glass and you can see through the pool, the entire side of the pool. So when, from what time a swimmer dives in to, to the flags at the other end, you can see through the wall. Um, normally you just have like a little window. So all of these, elements designed to create the ultimate fan experience. Um, we haven't actually seen it yet, so yeah. the, who knows what the totality of this will become. So I'm really excited about that. But it's really made to be for the spectators, made for TV, made for the spectators to have a good time, to get behind the athletes, get behind the teams more specifically. And it's always fun when you're giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what, what else? What, what are you most excited about for this ISL 
final. Uh, you know, for this final, I'm I'm a big fan of Adam Peaty. Yeah. Uh, and you know, when I I'm you know I'm on my swim pro social media all the time, so I get to see all these amazing swimmers all the time. Uh, but I've never gotten to see Adam Peaty swim in person, so I, I think I'm super stoked to yep. see him swim some bass and yep. swim some spins and uh, just I mean all the swimmers in general. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, you go to Masters, you go to all these different events around the world, and you see the best. But now they're like all in one place. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. see them all at one time. Uh, and even in the swimmers are on the side of the deck of the pool, mm -hmm. cheering everyone else on all at one together. So yeah, I mean you've got this awesome community of all these mm -hmm. amazing swimmers all in one place. Like the energy, the speed, the power. Like, it's just invigorating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have on the hashtag AquapowerISL 2019, my swim pro tweeting out and sharing it through all those hashtags. So you mentioned Adam Peaty, right? He's yep. a superstar. He's, he's for London Roar. But actually, what's interesting is, so yesterday at the press conference, they had, um, like, team captain, one athlete from each of the four teams represented. And so we had Nathan Adrian for LA Current. We had Caleb Dressel for Kelly Condors. Yep. Kate Campbell for London Roar. We had Sarah Soystrom from the Energy Standard. Yep. And if you just think about the accolades of these four swimmers, these are four of the best swimmers in the world, some of them in the history of swimming, right? I mean, we, you know, they all have their unique accolades. And so to have all four of them from different countries, right? A few different, three different countries represented there, um, four different teams leading a team that is diverse by country, that also their teammates are the best, some of the best swimmers in the world. I mean. I mean, Nathan Adrian has been to multiple Olympic Games. He and his teammates are, you know, they're not any less qualified than he yeah. is to be, you know, on an international stage. So I think for me, as a spectator, to be able to have the best athletes on different teams from the same country, actually, is really unique. You won't see that at the Olympic Games, and ties into the whole team spectator experience, um, which is really, really cool, and I'm really excited about. Um, any other questions that the swimmers have uh, have been asking us? Uh, yeah, one of the things that came up is talking about sportsmanship. Oh uh, yeah, with ISL. There's money involved. Yep. Um, you know, how do you think the ISL and the, just the, the, the swimmers in general have been handling sportsmanship? Yeah, it's a good question. I think this is a team event, so typically, even though there's prize money for individuals separate from the team, um, you know, at the end of the day. In the press conference, I think Caleb Dressel said, said it best. Or they all said this, but you know, it's all about a team yep. effort, and so they're cheering for their teammates, even though they're from different countries. And they meant, you know, I think Caleb said this. You know, at 2020 Olympics, he's got some teammates from Australia, yeah, yeah. and the U.S. and Australia are like the biggest rivals in swimming. But he would still be cheering for them, and so you build this team atmosphere, which I think the sport of swimming is missing right now. ISL is a start to where it needs to go, but if you look at like you know, professional football, and I mean soccer, um, you know, if you look at FIFA and, and you look at basketball in the United States, football yeah. in the United States, there's, it's a team effort. You know, people are all about the team. Yes, there's individual players that are contributing these athletes, but the team atmosphere is really unique. And I think seeing the sportsmanship will be really exciting in person, but also for the fans, because Definitely. if you're an age group swimmer, or, you know, and you're not at this elite level, you know, it's, it's okay to cheer on your teammates and people who are on other teams, potentially, you know, if you have some connection, like we all want to help each other get better, you know, and here it's all about racing. It's all about having fun. And the team atmosphere, I think will amplify the fun factor. Very cool. Uh, now kind of last question and it goes for, you know, younger viewers, younger swimmers, age yeah. group, high school yeah. swimmers, you know, how is the ISL going to affect them in their future swimming careers and just in goal of training and yeah, well, I think from, from both ends, you have the younger swimmers and you have the older swimmers. This league has actually stretched out some of the careers of the professional swimmers. So if we start with the old, the old people first, you know, they, they're in their 30s. Some of these people like Natalie Coughlin made a comeback to, to swim in the league, you know, not even worried about the Olympics. You know, so this op opens up the professional swimming opportunity. Definitely. Now, if you're an age grouper and you're not, you're not at that level and maybe you, don't, you want to just go to the Olympics, that'd be great. But Realistically, if you can swim at college in the United States, that'd be amazing. If you swim until you're 18, that's amazing. Do masters after, that's great. But for the age group swimmer, I think there's a couple different ways that this can be interpreted. I think one, it's exciting as a fan. Yeah, definitely. Another thing, cool. it shows what fast swimming looks like all year round. You know, it, you know, as a swimmer, you can learn a lot by watching other swimmers. When you see Caleb Dressel swim, when you see Sarah Soystrom swim the 100 meter butterfly, right? They're doing incredible things, and for the age grouper to learn from these athletes and see how they handle themselves in a team environment, 
manage their you know very busy race schedule. Yeah. You know, a lot of athletes they'll, they'll do like one competition per weekend and they'll swim maybe four events over five hours. These athletes will be swimming three, four, five events within two hours. So to see the, you know, how they prepare, how they handle themselves, the sportsmanship element, I think is really inspiring for an age group swimmer. And it's also good to see these athletes step up and race when it's not the most important meet in the world for them on the grand scheme of things. Like a lot of these athletes are training for 2020. Yeah. They want to perform at the Olympic Games. They want to qualify for their country, you know, at the Olympic trials, however they do that in their country. And so this is a stepping stone for them and for other younger athletes to see, okay, so my ultimate goal is to compete at nationals or junior nationals or something like that. My stepping stone is the sectional meet or the state championship or the regional type of competition. And similarly, this International Swim League final is like that. It's like a stepping stone on the path to the Olympic Games, which most of these athletes are ultimately shooting for. Um, another thing that Caleb Dressel mentioned yesterday at the press event, and he spoke for all the athletes that were in the, in the press event, is that the athletes and coaches don't see this necessarily as an interference from their Olympic preparation. Because if you think about it, you know, ultimately the, this, is a, this is a big deal, but the Olympics is the ultimate show that's yeah. not going anywhere anytime soon. Swimmers for the next, you know, several quadrennial cycles, decades, nothing will take away from the Olympics. So that is the ultimate goal for most of these athletes. And if they thought, and Dressel said this, if they thought there would be any reason that this competition or this league takes away from that Olympic potential, they wouldn't do it. If anything, I think this will make the sport of swimming faster because it requires these top athletes to step up and perform when normally they don't want to perform. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we're about to enter Christmas training, you know, holiday Definitely. season. A lot of people will take maybe a week off or lighter training in the next week. And so this is an opportunity for them to step up and race in December where not all of them normally go to the short course world championships. And I think having an opportunity to race, you know, seven months out, eight months out from the Olympics. We're about seven, eight months out right now. That's a really good opportunity for the athletes and the sport of swimming overall. Yeah. It's a long-winded answer to, I think this is really exciting for age groupers and old people alike. Very cool. <laughs> Any other, what, what, are you, what is the most impressive thing you've seen so far about the pool? And we haven't even seen the competition yet. What, about the pool, what is the most exciting thing? Uh, the infinity water with the acrylic glass, you know, mm. it's like 21 meters long. Infinity wall, is that what we're calling I, it? I believe so. It's infinity wall. acrylic okay. glass. Uh, I mean, that's super cool. Uh, and then I think just the fact that this pool could be built in 19 hours for this event. Oh yeah, uh, Mandalay Bay, shout out. Yeah, and all these swimmers are coming here and like just seeing them all on the pool deck together interacting, like it's very cool. Nice, nice. Um, for me, I think it's actually the light show. That is, yeah. I mean, I think the underwater lines that are like pretty yeah. much lane lines, impressive. I need that at my pool. Yeah, so there's underwater lights, there's, there's like it's we're in Las Vegas like this is where you put on a show so I think the location couldn't be more fitting we're really excited make sure you stay tuned like comment and subscribe to this video on our channel so you can get more awesome content from not only ISL but swim tips sent right to your inbox we'll wrap up here in Las Vegas excited for the first international swim league Charlie and Ferris happy swimming happy bye swimming.